Good morning, Minister Payne. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, to uh, Auntie Tina and Uncle Harry, uh, a fantastic welcome to country. Thank you. And I'd like to say thank you to all those folk that are here with us at the 2018 Air Power Conference and for the grand start yesterday at the last post ceremony and at the reception uh, at the Arboretum. And uh, I thank you also for the opportunity this morning to set the scene. It is absolutely my view that we live in an age of disruption. The information and communications revolution, the global increase in economic development, economic linkages and interdependencies, and the competing forms of political and ideological movements have together made the 21st century a more dynamic strategic environment. And nowhere is this more evident than right here in our region of the Indo-Pacific. With this unprecedented sharing of economic wealth and technical development, it gives the wherewithal for more players, states, actors, businesses, communities, to exert some influence. And this means that sometimes these disruptors cause friction. And this friction requires management, shaping where necessary, but certainly influencing, and at times, real action. The air power characteristics of reach, speed, and precision effects remain important elements of a nation's defence strategy. The question for us to ponder at this 2018 air power conference is whether we are postured to apply this significant capability in a way that counters these disruptors. So as we open up the Pandora's box, we'll be asking also whether there are any possibilities and solutions for us to explore. Let us begin with the strategic environment. In one of the most significant developments in the modern era, we are experiencing a shift of the geostrategic center from the North Atlantic and Europe into the Indo-Pacific. This is the biggest shift in the global balance of power since the end of World War II. There are a myriad of factors driving this change. I'd like to focus on two. These key trends are altering the security landscape and are creating a disruptive world. The first of these trends is the relative rise of the economic, military and political power of the Indo-Pacific. The growth of the Asian economy, led initially by Japan and more recently by China and Korea, has significantly elevated the strategic influence of nations in our region. In the past 20 years, Asia's share of the global manufacturing has increased from around 30% to just over 50. And rising economic powers will continue this transformation. We must be mindful, however, that economic prosperity has typically been associated with increased military capability and at times, international competition. The United States of America, a prevailing underwriter of global security, is refocusing its foreign policy. The US national defense strategy identifies the reemergence of long-term strategic competition with revisionist powers as its principal priority. This is a shift away from its more recent focus on asymmetric warfare, including counter-terrorism operations and the maintenance of peace and order in an otherwise relatively stable global environment. Dealing with the very real threat of major powers, as well as many ongoing security issues, requires support to the US global network of alliances and partnerships. This is the backbone of global security. Alliances and partnerships are of particular importance in our region, which is home to five of the US's seven bilateral defense arrangements. Excluding the particular arrangements of NATO, our region is home to more and more varied formal defense relationships with the US than any other region in the world. The impact of economic power will become even more pronounced as military power grows to match. Prosperity has enabled nations throughout the region to invest significantly in militaries a legitimate response aimed at protecting their national interests. 
They also have easy and affordable access to sophisticated technologies, enabling pre-industrial societies to leap straight to the digital age, bypassing industrial development. More nations are investing in high-end warfighting capabilities and challenging what has historically been a Western advantage. Investments in stealth, networks, ISR and precision weapons are no longer a guarantee of capability overmatch. We now need to seek alternate solutions to reinstate a military superiority. Indo-Pacific nations now have greater means by which to pursue their national agendas. This new power balance is emboldening some states to challenge the post-World War II international rules-based order. The legitimacy of multinational security organisations and global arbitration systems is being questioned, challenging the future of the international liberal and rules-based order that has been the basis of stability for the best part of the last century. The second trend is the growth in depth and breadth of security issues. Today, would-be aggressors are seeking means to threaten all aspects of national power. Terrorists and organised crime have always looked for ways to get around the system. We are used to them not playing by the rules. But now some actors are also looking to operate in the grey zone, exploiting the vulnerabilities of free societies, markets and global communications. Historical Indo-Pacific security frameworks are coming under increasing pressure, in many instances from frontiers beyond the comprehension of those who designed them. The ubiquitous nature of contemporary communications is seeing propaganda as an effective element of information warfare, giving rise to the exploitation of fake news as a means to incite a response. Everything from the use of chemical weapons to civilian working strikes and even the presence of mass conventional troops in other countries. Technology is providing the means to contest every domain via integrated kinetic and non-kinetic effects, often originating from an asymmetric platform. Social networks now provide the means for ideologies to unite globally, challenging state boundaries and the basis of the Westphalian system. The Indo-Pacific region has never been more complex or challenging, and the rate of change is faster that, than in any other time in our history. The convergence of these trends is creating a new set of national security challenges. We have new and historical strategic actors that continue to abide by the international rule of law. It is, however, the emergence of new strategic actors, perhaps like ISIS, that don't abide by the international rule of law that are the catalyst to this, to this disruptive world that confronts us. Our challenge is to adapt and respond to this new order. The role of the Australian Defence Force to protect Australia and its national interests remains as relevant as ever in this dynamic world. For Air Force, this equates to the delivery of the seven air power roles, control of the air, strike, air mobility, ISR, command and control, force protection, force generation and sustainment. We have seen that air power can strike deep and integrated with the joint force, it can generate decisive effect. Today, we provide support to troops on the ground and critical visibility for commanders. It is the analytical, situational awareness and communications capabilities that increasingly provide the full range of air power support to our joint and coalition engagement. However, we need it to do more. Our Air Force is already capable, but is now facing the greatest evolution of air power in its history. The 2016 Defence White Paper has committed around $195 billion to new defence investments, of which almost $100 billion will directly support air power systems employed across the ADF. This will not just bring into service new platforms, but also a transition to information warfare, 
with unprecedented demands on data collection, processing, and exploitation. We now must be able to integrate and see to a network force, not just a physical one. Effective employment of an integrated and networked force to gain decision superiority and enable manoeuvre, despite any intent to deny the same, is the hallmark of a fifth generation force. Such a change demands ingenuity, requiring a workforce that is empowered to think and act outside of the traditional norm. Innovation is essential to the realisation of the full potential of this investment. Our next generation of airmen and airwomen must develop professional mastery that extends beyond mission specialisations. It must promote critical thinking, strategic understanding, innovative problem solving, collaboration and leadership. This is not business as usual. Air power begins and ends with people and teams. A technical network alone is nothing. This 2018 conference is both a strategy and an air power conference. It is structured to aid our collective understanding of emerging challenges, many of which I've already discussed, and perhaps our possible solutions. This conference is deliberately designed to take a measured approach to the problems that we are presented with. But this is no closed loop. Despite the challenges, we are not destined for war. But the complexity of the environment and the severity of the possible consequences means we cannot be complacent. In the Royal Australian Air Force, we are tackling this through our own dynamic strategy. We need a broad community to help us shape this strategy. We need your help. This is my call to like-minded chiefs. Those of us who share these challenges and common values, I ask you to engage collaboratively in order to better understand and shape the role of air power as an instrument of national security. This disruptive world is presenting new challenges to the role of air power. I don't know what the next conflict will be, but I do know many of the tools of trade are now more freely available to potential adversaries than ever before. In future conflicts, we can expect bases, support infrastructures, including civilian infrastructure, to be targeted through the use of physical and non-physical effects. These are no longer sanctuaries immune from attack. Emerging technologies will revolutionise the application of air power, but also give rise to new challenges. Success in the future battle space requires the coordination of joint effects across all domains, a system of systems. Air power must be com comprehensively integrated across the joint force to contribute meaningfully to the future fight. These obstacles and challenges are real, but so are the visions and the ideas we will bring to meet them. I have confidence in our airmen and airwomen to deliver on our vision. I'm reminded of the words of Henry Parks, our father of Federation, as he looked to the challenges at the creation of our nation. In the one hand, I have a dream. In the other, I have an obstacle. Tell me which one grabs your attention. My proposition, ladies and gentlemen, is that we grab both and collectively chart a new path for air power in this disruptive world. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for allowing me the presentation and also now uh, to begin our program, introduce our first speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce the Honourable Senator, the Honourable Maurice Payne. She is our Minister for Defence. She has guided not just our hardware development since, her, since taking office in September of 2015, but more importantly, and in the context of this conference, the education, the technology, the S&T development that has been able to support a contemporary Air Force, a contemporary Australian Defence Force, and indeed a future force. Ladies and gentlemen, that commitment has been quite substantial. Minister Payne, could I invite you to address this conference? 